Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm uh, feeling a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, pale. So. <laughs> she put fangs in, man. <laughs> Not a vampire, it's a goth. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, I'll preface this by saying that, you know, I, I was friends with Ashton uh, <laughs> for years. I like Ashton. I liked him. Um, I don't know who the fuck this guy is on camera. Uh, on, none of us, none of us, um, none of us did. None of, none of the other staff are going to say anything um, about this stuff. And even I'm a little hesitant, but I guess I'll just keep it friendly because I um, I don't want anything bad for Ashton, <clears throat> even after all the shit that's happened. Um, but I'm, uh, all of us are kind of disgusted with the guy. It It is what it is. So uh, I'll kind of give you an idea. So about a month ago, He's going to kind of explain it a little bit later. He says six weeks. I say about five to five, to, but it may be six. About a month ago, all of us hung up our coats. Uh, Time for the Just donating for being a man of your word yet again. Oh, no, I appreciate it. I always a man of my word. That's just, that's just how I am. Over yeah. I'll put that through for you. I'm free and they mad, baby. Ooh. They so mad. Okay. That's You're oh, going to hear it. so mad. baby. Memphis 10. Oh. There you go. Memphis 10. So, uh, so yeah, so about, about a month ago, a little over a month ago, maybe, um, we all hung up our coats collectively. Um, and now <laughs> I'm going to use the word staff. They don't like that, but they were all paid and, we, and all, all those people were paid. Um, there wasn't like weird things in the background where people were just getting fucked or anything crazy. Um, everybody was generally friendly with each other, except for Worski and the staff. But that's a whole other fucking conversation in itself, and I'm not gonna name so what, people's names. Okay, or, so I'll you, let them tell their story. So you were helping want. them build. So you were helping them build the show. Uh, I'll give you the run, now, the layout, so you get a general idea of how it worked. So uh, the week would start. Let's let's start with Monday. So the week would start. You had myself and maybe four other people, and half of those people, what they did was they would get all the clips. They would watch all the streams and then get the clips and clip it. Now, they were paid. They were paid. This isn't like they did it for free. People were paid for this. So um, how much they got paid, I'll let them discuss that if they want. So uh, so they would clip things, and then they would add a little bit of context to what it was. But before we even got to clipping and stuff, um, they would we would discuss, like, what, the sh what content people would want. Now, specifically for me, a lot of the stuff I did is what you would consider consider like consultation or criticism. Um, I would pay attention to like what people said, what people were asking, a little bit of the criticism. And then when we all, when we, I don't want, I want to call it briefing, but when we all would talk to them uh, together, uh, which nine times out of 10 was just PPP because Worski, and they're going to say a lot of stuff in here that's not true. Worski nine times out of 10 was never around for any of this stuff. And Worski kind of explains that he's way too busy for it in this stream. Mm -hmm. But it was, it's it's very he was never around. He maybe got briefed an hour to thirty minutes before the show went yeah, live, yeah. and it was very brief, and he didn't even know what was going on half the time. So, yeah. Worski was almost never there. So, a lot of the stuff I did was a lot of consultation, a lot of suggestions, ideas, what people were saying, where people were going with it, kind of like an ear to the ground of like, hey, this is what's kind of people are talking about right now. You probably want to do a show about this. Like a prime example I'll give you was and. This still irritates me because Worski said this is a bad idea. So Worski gets just to give you some examples and see and that you have shows that could have happened, but they didn't. So Worski gets involved with Keemstar, right, for the fight. Yeah. As an example. And I and at the same time, Ethan Klein, the host of the H3H3 podcast, goes live on air and suggests that users should bomb NRA buildings. Yeah. And then I said to him, I said, Well, now that you're in bed with Keemstar, Keemstar can scratch your back for a favor. And you should ask him to come on the show to discuss, do a whole show about Ethan Klein to go over all of his funny shit and this bombing. And it would get a lot of different viewers because at, because at the time when I was giving consulting, it was strictly for business. Like when the first, the day one, day one of the show, before the show even became a thing, when they first started getting it together, the first thing that they asked me to ask them about was what I would do if I was still running my show, if, if I was running their show. And I said, well, if you're going to have a, co a permanent co-host, you're going to make you want to make this a business because at this point they had agreed that they wanted to do it as a business and for fun, but mainly for business. Right. And I said, well, if you're going to do it for business, you need to get an LLC. You need to get a, a bank. Uh, you need to make each other's treasurers on the LLC, and you need to get a business bank account. And you need to get rid of. We all told him to get rid of PowerChat since day one. So that was a lot. We all yeah. told him to get rid of PowerChat. And literally, 
they don't they still don't tell you the reason why they kept power chat on here but a lot of the chat will recall that if you looked at the link and power chat on kino casino since day one it'll say power chat dot live slash subculture it's because rather than going to get an llc because they didn't want to or they were too they they were too lazy to do that and setting up a, a personal like a private a business bank account and tying like a paypal to it or whatever right Kong? for them right. to have it all on the up and up they just decided they were just going to use the subculture power checks that was already set up and just move it over and never change out of that format regardless of the fact that we all told them to get rid of power chat since day one so this this idea that they didn't know about it until like a few weeks ago and Bates said he was a part of it is it's not true that's not true at all I think even Ralph tweeted something about proving that as well already, but that, that was a complete yeah. lie. They just were lazy. It wasn't anything like crazy or nefarious or um, all that other stuff. They were literally just lazy. They were like, well, I've already had this with Kyler, so we'll just use this. And Worski handled all the money. It was through the subculture power chat. He handled all the money. And for a while, he was the only one that could see donations, and he 100% handled OBS. So what got pulled up on the stream was... Worski's idea. How much? How much were people um, now, paid weekly to uh, to do the show then to actually sell the shows? Um. So some of the guys got paid all right. Some guys didn't get paid uh th those weeks because they they were like, I don't know. I mean, Ashton, we were all friends, so it was let, like for a lot of us, we were friends. So like there'd be times like when Ashton's talking about the cabin and like the freezing and the stuff during that time. You had the Toronto uh, truck rallies, right? Mm -hmm. And they were going really hard and he, he wasn't, he wasn't vaxxed at the time. He's vaxxed now. Mm -hmm. And, um, they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't hire anybody without this thing and they were freezing, uh, bank accounts. And so he was just stuck trying to apply for jobs that instantly told him no. Um, and he did apply for other jobs and they kept being told no. Um, and so he ended up freezing this cabin and he, and he did get help. So, uh, I can understand when he is telling the cabin stuff, that is true. He also uh, the said, worst key thing he, with him helping. He him said he, yeah, he, he, he said know. he's not been vaccinated though, but I guess this is during the vaccine time. Uh, I'm gonna let him share that story. I don't want to go into it. it's his personal details. He said it yesterday. He did, we, we, he we, like I said, what I'm showing right now, we went through last night, so I know that he gets to the point where he says he's not vaccinated. So, all right. Well, then he's not vaccinated. I guess I heard differently, but um, but if that's what he wants to stick with, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So um, go on. so anyway, so so we so. So basically what I would do is I would give them, so how it went down was is Monday through Thursday, all the content would be put together, the ideas for the show would be put together, and then um, the suggestions of the consultation would be done. And then on Thursday, we would do like the briefing or Friday, sometimes Friday, where essentially everybody would get together on a call and we would go over the content with uh, the hosts. And in this case, most nine times out of 10, it was just BBP. Because um, worse, he's lazy or he was busy or whatever. And um, PPP would just say, I'll pass it along. So we would go over the stuff. And then, you know, he would ask us, well, what do you think of this, that? And we would tell him our criticism and stuff. And he was criticized. This wasn't like ass pats or anything like that. A lot of the stuff they never, they never ran with almost 90% of the ideas that we suggested. And a lot of the stuff was written, uh, was ran, was just stuff that they wanted to do. Um, but they, they just couldn't be bothered to do it or they didn't know anything about the situation. And so the people who were paid to clip, and get context for stuff and watch these Ralph shows and watch these Fuentes shows would put the show together. So essentially they were just talking heads for the writers and the writers put everything together. And the consultation would be like, these are really good ideas. These are what people were saying. And they would just be like, yeah, but Ralph or, but Fuentes and <laughs> I'd be like, okay. So, you know, if you get, I'm, if we like myself, when I got paid, I said, well, it's fine. You don't have to take, um, you know, the, the advice that's given to you or this and that, if you don't want to, you can do your own show, but these are what people were saying. Right. And this is what's right. content right now. So that's kind of how it went. And, um, it, there was, a uh, some strange stuff, you know, like where, uh, PPP or Worski went on vacation and then, uh, we got paid to co-host to run OBS. And then is that when he, oh, apparently, is that when he allegedly one... went to go meet some catfish or something? Yeah. I don't know anything about all that. So Worski, Worski did his own thing nine times out of 10. He was never really around. I mean, this was, he literally essentially would just show up to make money and leave. No, of course. I'm telling you, I can't, I can't stress you enough that the guy was never, almost never involved in the process of setting up the show. 
at all. And I don't know if he is now or not, but <clears throat> during our time, so, yeah, I just, the thing up, is, I, I just found this whole thing just this fucking fake. And, and I, like, so let's go through this. Right, I, I like, just to give you an example of how I run my show. <laughs> I get up in the fucking morning and I spend about two to three hours going through everything that I or the, the best sources that I know on the internet to try and find some good content. And if the worst comes to the worst and that fails, I'll probably spend another fucking couple of hours finding other content via Reddit or wherever to find some funny videos for you or through YouTube. What I can't fucking understand is why it takes a fucking two fucking retarded Canadians, right? A, a whole bunch of money to spend giving to other people to build a show for them. So that, like, how do you do a sh how do you do a show when you don't know what's going on? Like, the only reason why I can even me... reference back to points and stuff, like when I could, like, even with Andy Worski there and stuff, and, and uh, any points that I reference back to are only from my own knowledge of going through this. So, like, I don't speak to people as yeah. well, and people obviously say stuff to me. But this is, I just don't yeah. understand how they can't do this. It's it's a one man show. This sort well, it, of stuff, it's, it's real easy. This will blow your mind. So, so the first day when I got my this consultation, um, can you give us advice? This and that, right? Um, First thing after I told them the LLC stuff was, I said, okay, well, this is great. Because they decided they wanted to do Fridays and only Fridays, one day a week. I said, well, this is great. And I said, okay, guys, I said, this is where you, you start hustling. I said, you want to do business, you want to have fun with it, <clears throat> and you want to make you want to make money, and you want to have fun with it, make a good show for other people in this sector of the internet that want to enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, this is what you do. I said, Monday and Tuesdays, you and Worski sit down, and you spend hours going over content obviously this doesn't include like major explosions on the internet that everybody's oh, yeah. going to cover right but just the general just to kind of go through and see what everybody's talking about and i said then you can start putting stuff together once you have that all set up i said wednesdays and thursdays you can get either guests or you can compile everything get it all formatted write a script of how like what how everything's going to play out with time slots so you're not pausing all the time or like having, you know, going past your time because originally they only wanted to do two hour shows. <laughs> that's obviously not uh, how it went, but that's what they it's wanted. Almost, it's almost um, like then, it's almost like they saw how my fucking show was running and went, How the fuck does he do that? Magic, motherfucker. Magic. That's how I do well, it. It was just like um, okay, to basically put it in a funnier way. Um Basically, I would be like, this is how you clean your room. And they'd be like, but, you know, they'd be like toddlers and they just throw shit all over the room. And I'd be like, no, no, no. And you put it, you put it orderly in here. And it was just like that. That was essentially what it was. And then uh, um, for me, at least, I can't speak on behalf of the others and I'm not going to. But for me, that was my whole part of the, the whole thing. Um, so it was a little strange. So when the when the whole falling out happened, it makes it to, the, to me and everybody else that hung out, the, the entire staff, because everybody walked. Everybody walked. It was only... Uh, worst game PvP left when we walked a month ago. Um, now I think it's like right. Kinoche and Chris Dorian X. I don't know. But when everybody walked, none of us like uh, walked uh, generally because of, uh, and I think he kind of explains it like there was no bad blood. They were just, some people were like just burn out, and other people were just like, you know, like you're, you're, you're doing your own thing. You're not listening. Right. Um, and it's fine. We'll, we'll keep business and personal separate. You know what I mean? So they, people yeah. just didn't want to do it anymore and it wasn't like a snaking and then he <laughs> and then and then he does this whole thing with with Worski and he snakes one of the staff members where Worski's tweeting out at shit at him and Goblinson comes back and I said he explains this I'll, I'll give you the context so Goblinson comes back to do a show with Ashton and he is informed that that he is going to replace uh, 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 Worski and that they're going to continue the show with him and Goblinson Right. Um, Gobinson agrees to, I think it was like 2000, I think he says this too, $2,000 a month. And then, uh, so <laughs> this is gonna, this, this is what pisses all of us off. Cause this is where it starts. Like we, where we don't know the guy. So, so he pays him $500, uh, whatever the first week. And he decides, uh, Gobinson, I remember being on a call. That's how it's so five, decides, one second, bro. Bitch. So like, Bish, he just wants the 501 thing, you're fine, let's talk. <laughs> Work, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Carol. Well, um, so after all that happened, when they do their show, um, Ashton's with the flamenco thing. <clears throat> Ashton's a little salty about it, but he still says he's going to keep his promise and like Worski's going to be gone, and then nothing happens, right? 
so nothing happens. Everyone's kind of confused with what's going on because we've been all informed that this is going to be like a co-host change out, right? So yeah. Ashton and Godwinson, I guess, I don't know. They start planning a vacation. I'm not going to say where, I'm not going to say how. So they plan, they're planning like an IRL vacation to have fun. They are real life friends. They've met up before um, and they're excited. And so Ashton's getting it all ready. And, and Worski tells him um, that when he goes on vacation, unlike Worski, he has to still do the show out of Godwinson's house. And Godwinson basically says, no, we're on vacation. Like Worski didn't do that when he went on vacation. He didn't do that for him. He can just get a co-host. So then Worski basically tells Ashton, well, if you leave, I'm replacing you with Jesse from Pot Off. And this causes Ashton to freak out, cancel the whole thing, and like want to not – uh, and want to basically kiss Worski's ass and uh, in a yeah. weird way. So we all kind of were like, what the fuck? So we just kind of started saying, well, we're kind of done with the show anyways. Um, we'll still be friends, everything like that. And this guy goes to Worski and just starts talking about the staff's personal life. Because we're all friends to Worski. So when one of the staff members decides to to say to sweep out a joke at Worski, Worski starts dropping like, I know your docs. I got stories for days on you, motherfucker, which basically Loki lets all of us know that, okay, so he's been basic since, you know, whoever knows how long, whether day one or this week, he's been basically telling Worski all the staff members personal stuff that's going on when they've shared it just with PPP as a friend, right? Wow. So that pisses all of us off. And this causes, and this whole schism between him and Gobinson and this vacation thing causes Gobinson to be like, okay, well, you want to you wanna leave Worski, you're complaining to everyone on the staff that Worski is making you unbearably unhappy with the show and you want out. So I'll do the friend thing and try to burn that bridge for you since you, you can't do it because you're afraid Jesse from Pot Awful will, uh, you know, will replace you and then the money comes in. So then the video of Galveston comes out. And my only criticism was, is like, well, he is our friend. Uh, he just got an apartment, supposedly. Um, this is kind of like a bad timing, whatever. And uh, PPP uh, basically gets really salty about it. And we all decide we're just not going to say anything. Um, it's their whole show. And then the whole, uh, so then they go live and I, the, the first stream, they go live the first stream and the whole chat's on so fire. So right? right? basically PPP is just a better paid gator, but without the tech benefits. Yeah. PPP <laughs> is a better gator without the tech benefits. So, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to recall a lot of this. It is early for me, so I do apologize. No um, so the first the first video, the first stream goes live. The whole chat's on fire. Everybody's throwing tomatoes. And I'm the only one in chat, like, basically posting, like, Ralph. Well, one of you. Like, Ralph flew at loss. Ralph seen me because I, I was still supporting my friend. Everybody else had walked. I was the only one that was kind of on the fence because I was like, well, he's still my friend. Everybody had their own issues to walk. You know, it, it become a little muddy. And then the fucking guy makes, like, some comment at me for donating to him. I can't remember what it was like a fucking uh, outline joke. And I was kind of pissed because I was just like, you know, everybody else in our little friend group, that's the staff that helped you with your show that helped you build Kino Casino for years, everybody else walked. And I was the only one that was nice enough to see like both sides of the aisle and still try to support your show. Uh, you can get fucked at that point. Um, that, that was kind of, that was kind of enough for me. So I, mean, I, I just make, said whatever. I, I, I make, I make outline jokes with you all the time though. So. Yeah, but you know, it's a little. It's, we're not real life. We're not friend friends. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? Fair. Like, it's a little different. I didn't work on your show. See, for see, over, see how we. Uh, see how. No, no, no I, I, un I understand that. I like I say, even if you were on my show, I'd you know, still fucking make and, jokes. And also, right. you didn't have like everybody walk out on you in, in a, like some some schism between the staff and the and the showrunners. No, right? I, I, I understand what you. I understand what you're saying to me. What I'm saying yeah. to you is just even if I, even, even if for some reason I was that retarded and couldn't do my own fucking show on my own or get content myself, um, and for some reason I reached out to yourself, um, I, I'd still make jokes, just like you're allowed to make jokes about me. I, I, I don't see any issue with that. So, well, it was it was more personal because he he it, all the stuff was happening right. Oh no, I, I get that. I get that. And there was, well, yeah, yeah. There's a lot more stuff to it than just oh i'm just making a joke so yeah. he was just being a fucking douche and um at least to me and everybody else so i was like i'm done uh you know i'm done i'm walking to and i hung up my coat and then everybody else everybody else was already gone and then we just decided we all said you know what let it burn let them just do their thing and um then so goblinson got frustratedly mad and he made his second video and that that video came out and then ashton decided at that point he was gonna you know he's gonna basically 
trying to dox uh, Godwinson and all that other stuff, and in and, and, and his drunken way, as he says. So I'll just take his word for it. It was really fucked. Uh, all of us were kind of like, we didn't. He he's never been the kind of guy that really, at least to us, to do that. So we were all kind of shocked by that. And you're like, well, well uh, fuck, one second, dude. I've got a, um, a I've got a person who clearly wants me to just block them in the chat and ban them in the chat because they're just like, hey, cog bans everyone. I'll I'll ban you if you really want me to. So I mean, they've been doing it for several times. Like, hey, everyone, just to let you know, I will I will ban retards in my chat who just say stuff. And if you want to be yeah. one of those people who wants to be banned, yeah, I don't mind. That's fine. Uh, sorry, carry on. Oh, this is just... But what, frus uh, what frustrated all of us, and oh, that, this is another thing. I do want to stress this. Okay, fuck Worski, and this is why. So when the first, when the Flamenco stream had him Godwinson, he was concerned. I, they're not going to fucking say this. I don't know why they didn't just tell the truth. He was concerned he was being replaced with Godwinson. So he decided he was going to sandbag the stream. So he was given a mega file on, 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 during the stream. Um, with all the fucking thing about Flamenco when Godwinson was on, and he refused to put that shit up the entire time. He pretended like he didn't know what he, fucking anyone was talking about. And then after the show, he decided to apologize to everyone and say he just thought God, he was being petty. And he sandbagged it. But then he followed up by having a conversation with Flamenco, where Flamenco said he gets first dibs on Ralph content, which this, this is fucking true. I hope he shows this. Prove me wrong. So, so they do the Flamenco stream. And then... We find out why why the entire argument, why Worski wouldn't bullshit up. Um, he was sandbagging because he thought Godwinson was placing him. He was right, but he, <laughs> I guess, but it never happened. Um, and then he apologized for it afterwards, whatever. And then from that point on, him and he, he had a conversation with Flamenco, which essentially was, as Flamenco said, from now on, I get first dibs on Ralph content. You get second. Like, it, you have to go through me for Ralph content. All this fucking silly shit, which were, and then you're not allowed to mention him on the show after that okay and so when you started seeing them go live and and ashton might say something about flamenco and you hear worski freak out going ah not like that that's because him and fucking flamenco made this stupid agreement that none of us agreed with we thought it, i was like fuck that dude this is retarded why the mm -hmm. fuck would you suck flamenco dick uh, excuse my, excuse me. I don't want to get you in trouble on, on Discord. This, no, no, I, I don't care. Look, so this, this, like I say, like Delta Peace on the this all sounds like a really gay house of cards. Like, so basically, they're all like yes. going, oh, I've got my dibs on that content, my dibs on that. Not all of them. Just flamenco. <sighs> just this was just a flamenco just, Warski. Oh, thing. A flamenco, flamenco Warski thing. Trying to, oh my God, trying to create some sort of gay little this like, was, anti Ralph right. So network. basically, how it, here's how it happened. Here's how it happened, right, Cog? He sandbags the fucking second flamenco stream, refuses to pull shit up because he thinks Godwinson's going to replace him because he's being petty. Then he goes into DMs after the show with flamenco and apologizes to flamenco for the whole show and says that they didn't want any bad blood. And flamenco says, well, if you don't want bad blood, these are the new rules. And he agrees to him. And then from that point on, this is why Kino Casino doesn't fucking make fun. Of, well, they wouldn't at the time. Um, it wouldn't shit on flamenco because of these fucking weird new rules that Worski set in place. And at this time, this is what really, really chapped our asses. So, at this time, Worski basically started running the show because Worski runs OBS. He was handling the the power chat stuff, the money. And on top of that, he would just show up and dictate what we can and can't talk about on the show, which absolutely infuriated fucking everyone. This oh, was yeah. the main reason why Godwinson pointed the, most of his criticism at Worski because he would literally, and at this point, this is where well, Ashton, and, he's, and I still like Ashton. Can you be a bit more concise, cop? Maybe just give us an outline. <laughs> Fuck it. That's a good so, joke. That's a good so, joke. Uh, so, so, and this is what frustrated all of us because it became less of like them being equally partners to Worski's show and he's a co-host. And he would vent about this. This is what caused like the whole thing about bringing Gobbinson in. He would vent constantly about how Worski basically was just raw dogging him and running the show. And there was do's and don'ts of what he could and couldn't say, especially when the fight got signed. When the fight got signed, everything kind of really, really, really became more of like uh, curation even though, and, and at the same time, Worski was never there. He would just say these things aren't allowed, and he would expect all of us to just know what isn't and is allowed. And he would not even know what the fuck we're talking about. So a lot of the show got cucked, like content cucked, by Worski, regardless of the fact, because I, Worski just didn't like it, or Worski didn't think it was funny, or Worski was concerned that it would cause a problem with some you know the funny, funny thing is? The funny, th the funny thing is, right, and this is how stupid it is, you would have actually been better off just watching my shows, seeing the clips that I find. I mean, I tell everyone where I got the clips from and stuff like that. You would have been better off finding all the clips through where I literally do a show. And give, I mean, three or four of my shows go for the better parts of the show and just give that to Bro. them and bang. That is, that's what their show essentially Bro. was anyway in the week. I, 
I can't stress. I'm not giving you an example of what the fuck I mean. Okay, this this one example is one that really pisses me off to this day. Okay. So Worski, for some fuck odd reason, during this time, because he was like content cucking the fuck out of this, wanted to do. I don't even know if he did this. I don't think he did. He might have. So maybe Chad can remember this if you're a Kino Casino watcher. So Worski decided he wanted to change the tune. He wanted to listen to Keemstar and change the tune of the show into a locale light video game show which was the dumbest shit i heard right. and i said fine you want you want me to try to give you consultation on this fucking idea because he wasn't gonna budge so i suggested i said well let's see what's going on right now and i looked and i said well you have diablo sorry, sorry, immortal going on say this again say, have... say this again so he wanted to turn oh, oh he wanted to turn uh kino casino into a game show as in gaming um like a game stream like like a, like a, a light Locale, like a light locale mainstream video game criticism show. So it's going to be wait. He wanted wait, to wait. So it's going to be criticizing locales and gaming. Sort of, yeah. I it was the way he described it. It's really dumb. So I'll. Yeah, so course, I yeah. tried to take what he said, and, I, and this was my consultation idea when he suggested it that week. I said, okay, well, let's look. And I said, all right, here's what's going on, Worski. You have Diablo Immortal is blowing up. Ted Cruz is supposed to do an internet uh, interview with Asmongold really soon. That's a good topic to cover. You can go over all that stuff with Bellior. That's fine. You can even reach out to these guys and invite them on the show. They might not know who you are, but you have enough audience that one of these guys might come on and talk about it. And then I said, you also have Actman versus Quantum TV, right? right. I said, you, I said, Actman... You can reach out to one of these two and get an interview with one of these two, either Axeman or Quantum. I said it'd be more funny to get Quantum and just let him talk because Quantum's crazy. Quantum, Quantum's a crazy dude. And I was like, and you could just get this guy on because Asmin Gold that same week got an interview with Axeman on Twitch TV. And I said, I mean, this sounded like a good idea to me. I said, get either get Quantum TV on or one of these guys about Diablo Immortal and shit all over it. And you and I mean, I, your audience isn't so, going to like so, it. One second, but you're not one second, one second. So for the chat, but so uh, Silvis, I think, is correct. So basically, it's just subcultured, but with lolcows. Yeah. Right. And so this is what Worski suggested after Keemstar was like, clean up your shit. And so, but he wasn't budging. I said, your audience, is, your audience isn't this kind of audience. They're not going to like this. But if you're going to try, at least a quantum TV interview would be the best idea. Mm. This fucking idiot didn't even know what the fuck I was talking about. You know what he fucking says to me, Cog? I swear oh. to God. He goes, well, actually, I was thinking we could just bring up some Review Tech USA videos to talk about Richard. And I just fucking, I just sit there silent. I go, what? And he's like, let's talk about Review Tech USA and, and DSP. And I'm like, what? Why? And he's like, well, why not? And I'm like, because who gives a fuck about Review Tech USA or fucking DSP shit? What are you going to talk oh, about? I hats? love talking about DSP shit in my show. What are you talking about? But then again, like I say, it's, I mean, it's because yeah, it's I love like, talking about lol cows. So if I, and like, and DSP has got that constant DSP grift, and every so often it just gets better. Apparently, his whole arc right now, apparently, something to do with he goes to bed at night and he keeps his cat in his bedroom or something like that, which means he's essentially abusing his cat, which has had like a urinary tract infection because I guess it's dying to go for a piss, but it hasn't got any water I, or a litter tray in the bedroom. So yeah, that's why people don't DSP like DSP always, right now. Yeah, I know DSP is always a milking thing, but at the time, DSP was doing like hats. Twenty dollars and like fucking vest vest jet. I mean, there was nothing going on with Phil and Review Tech. He was like laughing at like old Review Tech videos of like Richard and his hate and like uh, his haters. And it was it was it, it was bad. Like it was bad anyways. Like the whole idea was bad, and I had to work with shit. But I essentially gave them like a you know this is the best option for you. Quantum TV will bring in the most viewers. It'll be really funny. It's the same thing with Keemstar and H three H three. When I said just that, when Boogie challenged Ralph to a boxing match. I said, ask Keemstar to get Boogie on because he's managing him for Happy Punch Studios. Get Boogie on and have him talk about they. And he said that wasn't a good idea, which made uh, no fucking sense. Cog. I mean, it was it was you would give these guys fucking gold and they would shit on it. And no, say, no, no, we're going to talk I, about I, I, again. I, I know, I know, I know. Proud. Trust me, there's been tons of gold and stuff like that. I know that for a fact. So I put it in my own show. Uh, Evil Dead El Jefe for five saying he wanted to play games while playing lol cow clips and comments. I don't think he did. I think what Andy wanted to do was talk about he wanted he wanted to do subculture basically, but subculture wasn't making the money. So he decided to talk about lol cows, which can make a lot of money because you're talking about drama. So he talks about the drama, but he also wants to go back to subculture, but he wants to maintain that cash. So if you can get the audience into talking about that sort of stuff and you can get oh, some good donations from the no lol cow shit at the start of the show, one second, then he can obviously move on to uh, doing the gaming too. Also, that's a five from Evil Dead El Jefe. What is the five? Fingers, say to the face. What? Slap! <laughs> oh wow! Wow! 
Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. I'm a bit of a different audience, Cox, as I'm a shrew. Okay. No idea what that means. Creepy Crawler. Oh, it's King of Paul, not, not Persip. No, it's, it's uh, King of Paul. Uh, wait, so it sounds like he wanted a copy of Orgie SC Normie content as well. Yeah, probably Solvis. He probably was just trying to do that, and that's uh, why you've got the Kino Casino, unfortunately. And there's so many things that they could have done that would have been good, and there's so many different... The thing is, as an actual person who's been a croupier in a casino in a casino before, there's so many little things they could have done and played off the casino thing, and they've just not. Like, There's just tons of stuff. Like you could have even had like a, a fucking uh, a wheel that spins and stuff like that that has like the subjects to talk about. Like if, if you really wanted to, it's just crazy. Having to deal with, and one of the constantly. things that was really oh sorry, yeah, I'll, I'll let you talk. I'm not even gonna let you play. I'm just gonna skip back over. And um, I mean, there was constant times where there was a lot of new content that they could have talked about that people would have enjoyed. Um, and we would we would give them the suggestions. I would consult them on it, and and nine times, I mean, ninety nine percent of the time, they just did what they wanted because they didn't want to do the research. Because they, because I mean, like I would tell Worski these things, or if he would tell these guys, and they would be like, I don't even know what that is. And he'd be like, What is the point of you wanting to do a low cow show if if this is just you want to rail against Ralph? Fuck Ralph Festival is over. I mean, when Ralph does really dumb shit like Portugal, sure. You know, or he says crazy stuff. Sure, you can have a Ralph segment every night for like 15, 20 minutes. That's a good question. But if you want to like actually. Whose plan was it to get me on, me and Dan on the show? That was me. I suggested it. I said, why don't you bring, because I like your show. I said, why don't you bring Cog and Dan on? They just did the Portugal thing. I said, it'd be a great idea. And they were against that as well. And I said, no. I said, bring them on. I said, this whole Portugal thing just happened. It'd be a great idea. You could talk to them all about it. It, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I thought it was a good idea. See, it baffles me. I, they it baffles me. They were right. against it because, like, they had their whole show when we were in Lisbon, where they were just basically singing our praises. And then, obviously, when we got back, well, before I even got back, I'd already had messages off handed to come on the show. So, yeah, but that was me. I suggested that. Um, I said that was. A, I thought that would be a good idea. Um, it's the reason why I asked you in DMs because I was like, "Hey, this is kind of what's going on." Uh, you know, I think it'd be a good show for for everybody. Ah, right? so the reason why and, they can be so uh, two faced to keen is because it was never their idea in the first place. Gotcha. Makes more sense. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, there was a lot of things that I, I thought to them. I was like that this was, I said, you don't have to be, you can all just do content together. You can all, you don't have to like have issues with everybody behind the scenes or whatever. And, um, you know, and I kept beating into their heads that this is business, right? That it doesn't, don't make it personal. Your show's going to tank. You're going to be retarded and you're going to have a problem. So always treat it like business and have fun with it. If it isn't fun anymore, don't do it or change it up. And, mm -hmm. um, like I said, it became Worski show over time, and he became designated to like a geek Thulu position. And it was yeah. kind of sad because he was our friend, and, and Ashton didn't know what to do. And it was like, well, if you just would have gotten an LLC, separated everything from Worski, and like had everything 50-50, literally legally, right? Yep. Then none of this would have probably occurred, and you could have worked this a lot better. Oh, but yeah. you guys wanted to be lazy and sit on Super Chat when we told you to get rid of Super Chat since day one. Um, and you all just couldn't. You didn't because you want to be lazy, and you don't want to listen. Um, and you know, and it's nothing against, I, like I said, I don't know who this Ashton is anymore. This guy's kind of a, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not the same guy we knew, but at the time he was, he was all right to talk to. He was all right to, to work things with and everything like that. Worski was always a, Worski was always a pain in the ass, um, and retarded. So it was, it was frustrating to try to explain like why there were certain things that you should talk about. Like when we told them to talk about Vouch, Worski had like a fucking meltdown thinking Vouch was going to go after him which was retarded. And at the time, Destiny had just cut a video where Vouch did a debate with someone about how he believes that we sh that, that he's training leftists in his area to become militant so they can shoot Trump supporters in the street because he believes that he has to genocide the Republicans before they genocide the Democrats. I mean, right. th this is literally, I mean, there's a whole video. This is like a month ago. And I said, get, get Destiny on. He will come on the show and go over this Vouch stuff. And this and this Xander Hall stuff and whatever and and the bread tube stuff because this is crazy, and they were like, no, no, we can't do that. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Well, isn't that what they're doing <laughs> now? Like, or like, so who's helping them? Because apparently the next people they're going after is I can't remember now, Vickers and someone uh, else. So okay, so supposedly it's this Christorian X and and this Kinoche guy. I don't know. All of us hung our coats up and we're out of the loop on anything that goes on in the show anymore since a month ago. Right. So um, we we don't know, and we don't really care to know. We're kind of just Hold done on. with it. And so and uh, so, uh, so it's so wait. So who's help? So you guys aren't running the show for a month, and for the last month it's been Kino Shea and uh, Chris Orinax. 
that's what they say. I don't know. We right. assume that it was just them two. Basically, I think what but they're they doing is, like a, I think what they're so doing the, is exactly. Uh, what the thing is, is they're doing what I do, which is every day I'll just go to Kino. I've said this a million times on my show. Kino Shea, Chris Doran, X is a few of them. There's tri uh, uh, Trigger Point as well. Great guys for keeping on top of this stuff when it comes to doing it every day. Anyone can do a fucking show like this. You've got an opinion on it. Do a fucking live stream. Talk about it. Dress up as a goth if you want to. It's funny. Uh, but like I say, when it comes down to this whole situation, these guys can't even do a fucking show on themselves. Ranger for five. Hey, whose idea was it to get Andy Dick on? Uh, Andy so, Dick on. Who, who, to get Andy Dick on. Did you get Andy get Dick on Andy the show? Dick. Oh, that, oh, okay, that was my idea. So I actually had a funny story about that. So I sat there and I was like, uh, Andy Dick is on IP2. And PPP knew who that was. But Worski was retired. I mean, this is a guy who used to be a comedian. So it kind of blew my mind that he wasn't really on, on the up and up. on Andy, Andy, Andy wasn't, Dick a, was Andy wasn't a comedian. He was a failed comedian just like Mersh. Okay, I, I'm not gonna. I mean, he did stand up. That's all I'm saying. This was a guy who wanted to be a comedian. Amazing. You know who I've done. Are. I've done stand up like, before as like, well. I've stood up at the bus. I've stood up at the bus stop He's, waiting for a bus. You know, I've I've stood up a million times before. He got on stage and he said yeah. a lot of jokes that jokes that didn't fucking that didn't land. That's not stand up. I'm not, defend, That's bad, I'm not defending the guy. This is just bad fucking comedy. Just, I've seen videos. So I, I, I watch probably. I watch I a ton, I watch a ton of videos online where I see bad fucking comedians fail on stage and I'm just like sat there like that wasn't stand up. Yeah, he's a that was a, that was, a, that was fail, failure and that's what he did and then he decided right, to do right. a show. So he failed. He's a failed comedian. That's fine. I don't I don't care. He's a failed. the point is is like. You know, you he's my age. He should know who Tom Green is. He should know who Andy Dick is. He should know some of these people's names, Mike Judge. Um, and he was kind of unaware of what was going on with that. And I said to them, I said, get Andy Dick on. And they were like, well, what do you know about Andy? And I had to go over all the lore with Andy when Andy did his fucking uh, show, when Andy when Andy Dick's co-host killed, like, why got, he, got his wife to back on coke and she killed herself, which caused the guy to, like, go in the whole fucking situation with that um, in Libowitz, Josh Libowitz. Um, and so I suggested him, I said, get Andy Dick on. That would be fucking great. Andy Dick would be huge for the show. I said, that'd be awesome idea. I thought that was funny. Um, and they did. They did take that advice. They, uh, they reached out to him. Andy was all about it. They had to pay Andy Dick, obviously. He doesn't do anything for free. Um, and, and that was how that went down. So uh, there you go. But yeah, so funny, funny story. I had, I had a brief Worski, I'm like, I had to tell them basically who these guys were. So, was it not your idea, or, or whose idea was it to do the flam stream? The flamenco stream? That yeah. was the, that was just the. They were like, "This is what's hot right now." All right. See, 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 this is why they were this, like, "This is this is, this is what I don't get." This is what I this is what I don't get. The one where what Godwinson came on. Oh, that was um. So so flamenco gets all wrapped up in this child child. Uh, porn stuff, and that was like the hot thing, and so they were just like about that because it was the right, hot okay. thing. So, so again, uh, this is basic. this is what makes no sense. So, right, let's say you're paying a team to run your show for you, what which is what they're doing. They're planning you to. They're asking you to plan yeah, they had writers, plan, they had yeah, plan and writers, all this shit. Andy, you're an idiot. You'd save a lot of money if you just learn how to look for content. Be a filter for content. <laughs> Here's how simple it is. Okay, do you like things on social media? Cool. Well, once you've liked it, why don't you put like a link to it somewhere? Like, do you know when you share stuff online with your friends? There's a whole share button that teaches you. In fact, under every YouTube video, there's a fucking share button. Do you know why? Because we share things. Do you know what I share? I share it with you guys. My show about you guys. My show. That's what it is. All the stuff I want to share, I put it into a fucking show. It's that fucking easy. And these well, guys and need to get. A, uh... These guys need to pay a fucking team. And this is the stupid part. You're throwing money away when you're paying a team to do it, only to go. Well, actually, this is what's hot right now. Like flamenco, that flamenco so hot right now. Uh, so I sabotage rules for streaming. Own your mistakes. Listen to what the fans and chat want. Send messages under the assumption that they will be leaked or hacked eventually. Read the super chats. Be honest. Chat, 4chan, or oh, Kiwi Farms will chat. catch lies. Yep. Chat always wins. Oh, chat always wins. 320 going on. Right? Ran the block with oh no, you got the donations yet. Man, 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 I know, I, I burst everyone's ears. Uh, hello, Cog, you look beautiful today. Good to see you, Stargate's nice name. Not found, good to see you back out of your timeout. You did ask for it. Cog, uh, Andy's lazy. What, are you, you're, what you're asking to do is to do too much like work. I mean, it's not a lot of work. It's like, if he was to put in, if he wanted, yeah. wanted to do his two hour show, it takes about two hours to three hours of prep. But it's uh, like, like I, I, I can get a two hour show done in about two hours, even if I've got fucking nothing to start with, so. 
Yeah. Well, th- th- this is another thing too. So when when the falling out between the staff and PPP and Worski happened, well, uh, we already were are kind of sick of Worski because he had kind of like started bullying how the show was going to be dictated and what he wanted. And um, and he would basically, like I said, he would just do various different shady shit, like oh, we'll replace we'll you with, you know, uh, the pickle man or fucking, you know, whatever. And um, it frustrated all of us. But I mean, PPP did show up every time for all the briefings. He did uh, he did assist in some of the clipping and stuff every now and again when he could. He just didn't do a lot of it, but because I mean, he paid us. But but worse, he was never fucking there. And, and a lot of times, he'd show up thirty minutes before the stuff would go on, and he would not even watch any of it. He just thought, "I'll just watch it live." And have a live reaction to it. And it was a really fucking stupid thing. Nine times out of ten, how it was down. And Worski would take these ass pads. So there's this, okay. There's this Discord for the gum road. That has, like, the top pay, paying people in it that, like, love the show. And they, I mean, they basically gobble down Worski Dick. They love, they just love his show. They love everything about him. They pay to to sit in VC with them and watch shows with them. Um, it's really strange. I've never, I don't know much about it. I'm not in the Discord. We never were. None of the staff were. Um, it was a very strange relationship. We would hear it, and he would just, like, love it, and they would give him these crazy fucking ideas that they wanted. Um, and <laughs> I just, I just don't know how to explain it any other way. And he would just show up and be like, dude, one of these guys from Gumbra. <laughs> why did, um, it, just, it was just, uh, why did PPP spoke out over the, um, Jesse wearing a pickle outfit? What's that about? All right, so the PPP lore with Jesse. Okay, a lot of people don't know this, so there's it goes way back. So PPP, back before Worski was even a thing, this is the drama. And a lot of people don't understand this because for some reason PPP just decided he, he wasn't ever going to address this again. He assumed that people would just know because he's made the video about it um, and that people would just go back and watch the video from like years ago. So PPP did an interview on Je- Je- Pot Awful's show. Now, Pot Awful's show is paywall. Okay? Yeah. And he puts it on his whole little paywall thing. He had to pay to watch it. Yep. And he had asked Jesse, essentially, hey, can I put this on my channel? And I did the interview with him. I want to do that. And so he said, sure. So PVP put it on his channel. Jesse from Pot Awful decided to content claim it, not to take it down, but to claim all revenue that's coming in from the video. My, my At the time, PVP never monetized his videos. So PVP's response to this was to say, what the fuck? Um, and he was just like... Well, it's my it's my show. It's paywall. This is what I do. I need to make money off of it. And he, he was like, well, that's not I mean, I did the interview with you. This wasn't what we intended in the beginning. With it. And he basically said, well, fine, I'll take my ball and go home. And he flagged the channel, the video down completely and basically right. said, if you put up this video again, I'll keep flagging it down. And it pissed PPP off because Jesse was being faggot. I said, I mean, excuse my language, the F slur. But and he was just being a douche nozzle. And um uh, and so ever since then, PPP's never liked Jesse because Jesse is a flagger. Jesse will take content down and tell you one thing and do another. Um, and that's just, and if you work with him and you do an interview on his show, if you try to re-upload that, even with his permission, he will claim it, claim all revenue on it 100% and argue with you that it's his stuff and this is what it is. And if you keep arguing, he will just take the videos down. And so since that time, he's never liked Jesse and Worski loves Jesse. He thinks Jesse's funny. He thinks Jesse's the greatest thing. And then Worski threatened PPP with replacing uh, PPP with Jesse from Pot Awful. And this this caused even a more of a problem between him and Jesse. So when Jesse would show up, he would have an attitude. I mean, rightfully so. But he wouldn't right. express why he would have an attitude on the show. He just would. So when, he sh- so when that pickle suit shit happened, this is what was supposed to happen. Jesse was supposed to show up. It was considered, they all discussed this. It was considered going to be a serious stream where Jesse was going to show receipts about a lot of things going on between him and, uh, and, and uh, I guess I think it was Ralph. I can't remember. Um, and they were going to go over this stuff in a serious manner. Instead, Jesse shows up in a fucking pickle suit and starts trolling, trolling them. And it really, it just, I think that just really did it for him. And he was like, you know what? I'm fucking done. It's either you. This is why PPP said it's either me or him. Because at the time, you have Worski looming over the fact that every time Ashton would say something wrong or like say, like, I get, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say step out of line, but irritate Worski. He'd just be like, well, I'll just get Jesse from Hot Awful to do it. Right. And, you know, when you have a, a fucking douche co-host that's constantly saying shit like that to you and then he brings the guy on and you get snaked and you think it's going to be like this one segment and it's completely not and it's a troll. Um, that would piss you off too. So that's why 
PVP and Jesse have an issue, which is rightfully, in my opinion, I think Ashton's in the right. Um, and this is why they'll never get along. Um, it's just the way it is. And you can think whatever you want about Jesse. I don't care. I think, I think he has a cool setup. I think his, I think his, his setup's really cool with the TVs. I, I don't know Jesse to make an opinion on him or his content, really. But, uh, but he, what he did was pretty, pretty douchey. So, and that, that's about it. I mean, there's nothing else to say on that. No, that's fair enough. So it was, it wasn't actually, it wasn't kayfabe the, the, the actual back and forth on the, uh, the stream. No, no. I mean, it was a mixture of Worski being a douche nozzle with looming this Jesse pot off for replacement shit over Ashton's head and Jesse and him having beef for a long time that was never con resolved ever. And, uh, you know, and every time it tried to be resolved, Jesse's a fucking troll. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, fuck it at that point, you know? So that's fair enough. Uh, I'm going to leave it there, King of Paul. We've been going for more than two hours. I can't wait to get this glitter and shit off my face because it's irritating my sense. Yeah, bro, skin. yeah, I'm going to hop off. I, I just yeah. want to kind of come on and give you a little bit of context to give you an understanding of, of the inner workings. Uh, yeah, no worries. Know, I appreciate it. Own story. So I thought maybe the content you guys would enjoy kind of getting it. Uh, hopefully this kind of fills in some gaps. Um, and, and some stuff maybe some people kind of had a general idea well, like I said, go, if, oh, yeah, if you've sense. got a way of uh, if you if you've got a way of reaching out to the uh, the other people that helped to build the show at least before the last month um, they won't they won't come on none of us okay so so what? i don't want to say their name i guess i'll say it's like the, the staff guys in general none of us wanted to like not, none of us snaked on him i mean this whole snaking thing you know we're gonna use the term snake none of us ever did anything his fucking logic by the way, on this whole thing was is, is he assumed that everyone else, everyone else on the staff was just snaking on him, so therefore it justified his actions of snaking on on us and like sharing stuff to Worski, personal stuff to Worski, like doxes or whatever um, for some of the staff members. And we were like, why? All we did was help the show. No, but again, friend, again if you friend. if you if you help a show and the person's just being retarded when it comes to building the show, it's not snaking on them for saying, "Hey, put some fucking work into this." You know, I, I totally understand that. Um, like I say, but if you, is there a reason why people won't come on to, let's say, this show to talk about this? Because no, because because some people, some people, it's more personal than the other guys for the staff because they were real friends. I mean, right. I mean, I forego payment a couple times to help one of the staff members going through a situation. Um, and PPP decided to make mock that to Worski and, and make fun of that and give the guys information to Worski, which Worski tweeted oh, wow. at the guy about. So it's like, it's like when you see yeah. shit like that and none of us did anything except help your show, try to make you the best show possible and be your friend and, and support you when you're in a cabin freezing your ass off or like, and like help you with other things, offer you like money, offer you work, shit like that. And like you do this shit to people, it, it just burns them in so well. Nope. You're gonna get what you just else to say about it. None of these have clout. They all have jobs. They all have things going on in their lives, and they they weren't ever trying to be anything other than like, you know, we didn't come together and go, hey, let's start a show together. It was more of like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, and we all offered as friends to help, and it turned into the show. And this is what right. do, do yourself got, a favor. And and I'm, I'm gonna say this to I'm gonna say this for the millionth time, okay? And this is to anyone watching, anyone out there, okay? And this I've said this when SoCal Chris and stuff and AG Luck went down to Miami. I'm gonna say this again. If Andy Worski reaches out to you asking you to do something to do with his fucking show, anyone out there, tell him to fucking learn how to stream. Tell him to learn how to do the job he gloats he does. Tell him to learn how to fucking do it. Tell him to learn how to use OBS. Tell him to learn how to fucking put windows on the screen without showing fucking links. Tell him to set shit up a couple of hours before a fucking show. Yep. Tell him to fucking find his own and fucking clips. Tell him to go and find his own shit. Tell him to go and fucking do his show. I'm too busy fighting right now. Well, don't do a fucking show then, you retard. Go and train. Go and do your fight. Go and make millions off Keemstar. Or do your fucking show. Which one is it? I fucking can't stand this stuff. Oh, the thing a, is, I've been doing thing, a show. I've got on the I've been doing a show yeah, for four fucking up, years. Dude, I've yeah, been doing a show for four you're... fucking years. I've got a few co-host shows and stuff like that. I can't understand. And I don't make... In comparison to the money these people make, he makes like they make like a grand, two grand in a show. And and what do you get? Oh, we're paying a lot of people behind the no. scenes so we don't actually know what the fuck is going on with our own show. Fuck and... that shit. There are people that there are people out there that can run better shows than Andy Worski, and that's where your money should be going. Not even mine. There's there's other shows out there that do the same stuff. Paulie Frog and so on. You want to start donating to these people and supporting these shows, and let Andy just fucking di disappear into nothingness until he has to rebrand himself as something fucking new.
Fucking hell. And that, that's another that's another thing too. Just before you end the show, I, I do want to say this. You know, we would uh with the with the Keemstar coming into the thing, I mean, I sat down with them and I tried to have a coming to Jesus moment where I was like, listen, you have direct access where you're talking daily and friendly and becoming friends with a guy who runs the biggest drama channel on the internet, who is a multimillionaire, successful multimillionaire, and has tons of business ventures off of this drama channel. If you don't sit with him and and start asking him questions on what to do business-wise and how to get to that level, you are fucking stupid. And they just never, I mean, to this, from my knowledge, they never sat down with Keemstar and tried to have a business conversation about how would you run a show like this to make oh, millions? Oh, no, no, no. It's it's it's, it's, it's uh, the, the team. Like, the team star. Like, no, no, no. The, you've got like, you've got no, no, no. But right, hear me out. The team star stuff is a flash in the pan. He's doing the, like as in like team star. Like uh, Andy Walski is doing team star a favor because it'll make team star finish up a card which he already has everyone else obviously on planned onto that card for, and he doesn't really care. He's more about the KSI wasabi stuff, and he's going to make a load of money off the fact that's there. Andy Walski no, is care. filling. You're wrong, you're wrong about that because we've been what? in the calls. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. You're you're wrong about that. We've been call. Call. Keemstar calls like every other day. Right. Keemstar would call every other day, give information every other day. He would talk with them, joke with them, make jokes. I, I know, I know, I know. Normal. I get, I get this. I, I get this. I understand that. But when you do these business talks, it's about the fight, right? It's not about drama. Some of it was. Some of it's it was. And it's, some of it was drama. I mean, oh, it was actually drama based. So, so Keemstar's watching the show, but he doesn't want to give Andy so, advice yeah, on how no, to build a drama show. It was, it was, so the fight, once the, once. Once Happy Punch signed him and he signed on and got the contract all settled with with Saul Poppy, um, right. and everything like that, it became like him just shooting the shit with them and talking and like just chilling and getting to know them. I mean, he would call Sam Hyde would call. These were things that were happening. And when you have access to big name, like big content creator names like this in such a way, and it was like it was like, dude, you're doing and like you said, you know, he's doing. He's got him. He saved his ass by signing him on the card, right? And he's got two other fights signed up with Happy Punch Studios after this fight already. So he's already listed for about a year. He's got a year's worth of fight coming up for Warsky. Yeah. And so when you have Good. these, when you have this kind of connection where you're basically giving Keemstar the favor, like you said, I sat there and said, I said, well, it's it's business. So favor for favor, this is normal business. Nepotism is a thing in business. Let's not let's cut the bullshit. No, I, I get it. Right? I get it. No, 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 no. Well, I'm telling you right now. So this is the difference between Warsky and what you're saying right now is that Warsky, you can sit there and go, oh, but it's business for business. It's not. It's Keemstar will keep him on hand as long as Ke as, as long as Andy keeps saying he's going to fight. Because as long as Andy keeps fighting, Keemstar is always going to make a paycheck out of it. So he can keep him on side as long as he keeps fighting to keep making a paycheck out of it. So it's not. Right. Yeah, he'll talk to him a little bit. Right. He'll talk about the drama. Do you know why he's not going to sit down with him and teach him how to do a better show or teach him how to do the drama better? Because here's the first thing. I'm going to give you the first bit of advice Keemstar is going to give him. Pay attention. Pay attention. Look at the fucking drama you're talking about. Actually know what's going on and don't have someone feed the information to you so it's secondhand right. information. Fucking hell! Go and right. go and get take well, it on board a, yourself. Take it on board yourself. Fuck! Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, Carl. We've we've sat there and we've listened to the no, guy. No, no, no. Uh, look, all he, I'm going to tell you, all, loves, King of Paul, listen to me. All you said, and since you've come on here, and I am finishing the show here, and I know you could say more. We'll I'll bring you back on the show, and we'll do another show if you want to in the future. I'll bring you on, and we can go through this for a good couple of hours because because uh, like I say. Um, cause this is, it's, it's clearly got more to it than, uh, than I uh, intended on when, yeah, uh, when I brought you on at first. Now, just to put this out there though, this, this is the truth of the matter, which is just, yeah, he's got the fight stuff going on and all that stuff. Great. But the issue is with Andy, and this is the issue all around is that he's got, he's everything is secondhand. People are making a show for him. Andy is not a YouTuber or a streamer. Yes. He's just sitting there reading. He's laughing yeah. into a mic and he has the weakest takes on anything. And this is cause he's not, he's not, he's not um, prepared a yes. show. Like I prepare a show daily. Right. So to even hear that, they, like to hear that other people are preparing it for him and he just <laughs> turns up last minute. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I was like, well, you know, he's got that fight going on right now. And like, I'm going to say this again, go and focus on your fight. Andy, go and become a fighter. You're not a drama streamer anymore. And if you're going to continue doing drama streaming, I can only hope you're going to look at the fucking clips like actually look at them and actually to actually go this should go in the show and stuff that's how it feels when you when you know you've got a good show you can go live and go it's going to be a good show today guys got some questions and that's it you know you've got some right, bold stuff right. they go live and they're going off what someone has told them is going to be good and i think that's pretty fucked up because the audience isn't coming there no offense to you but the audience ain't coming there for your opinion they ain't coming there for anyone right. opinion anyone right. who's building that show they're not there for their fucking opinion they're there for andy they're there for andy and ppp and what right. they personally found interesting and what you're telling us is that the entire show Shows a facade. It's literally what Godwinson said was correct. It's been built by other people, and they haven't got a fucking clue what's going yeah. on.
Well, PPP does. Like I said, he would be there every day. Um, he just he just didn't. I mean, he just didn't do a lot of the heavy legwork. PPP. 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 PPP turns up to hear what's going on from other people and not actually find this. PPP is basically doing uh, like t like t what I do every day. That's like five percent of what I have to do is reach out and find out what's going on with a few people. But it's not a huge part of it. Most of it I'll just fucking find on my own because I know the sources to go to. I'm not even on a fucking Twitter account right now that works. I have to manually find everyone every day because I and you just start to know the names and stuff like that. And that's what that's yeah, what yeah. leads me to where I need. The issue is no, is that I, they don't I, do uh... that. They don't do that. They're jumping into like a fucking conference yeah, you're right. call. No. No, right. before they do a fucking show and it's like the issue that yeah, i'm saying is i do this right. daily bro i do this daily it's not hard for them to wake up go and have a look at what kino shay or fucking christy or or any of their other people or and I'm, I'm sure with a network like andy's he's already got people sending him clips from the night before anyway so just look through them andy get a timestamp or two actually fucking yeah. put some effort but into I mean, your show um... Because there's no effort in that show. That's there's nothing. Of... They've got a fucking moving background. There's no effort when it comes to where the chat is. There's nothing when it comes to a jingle coming up for a donation. There's nothing on that fucking show when it comes to anything. The guy can barely share his fucking screen without dropping a link if he's got a fucking conversation going on. It's absolutely retarded. Yeah, and so just to wrap it up, I mean, with the Keemstar stuff, just to say this, I mean, Keemstar, if you haven't, if, if, he's, he's in this weird, okay, just listening to the guy privately, and all the stuff that's going on, Keemstar wants to help people. He's very much about paying it forward in his yeah. own way. Like he keeps offering a bunch of, it's not just him. He's offering like a bunch of people different monies for different ideas and stuff that he thinks, and that a lot of people and he thinks are just a waste of time, but he just wants to see something be successful on its own. He likes to invest in a lot of shit. He has a lot of money. And when I, what I was, I mean, like I said, I, my, my whole stick with them and what I got paid a lot of the times was consultation. So when Keemstar got involved, a lot of it was this look, like you said, you're doing a fight for Keemstar. And just like you said, um, you know, if Keemstar will keep writing the checks as long as you're doing the fights and all that other stuff. But you're making a relationship with a big drama YouTube channel who is successful, like super hyper successful. And if you want to be smart as a drama channel yourself and you want to be hyper successful and be millionaires, like you truly, because this to them it was supposed to be business and fun. If that's what you really wanted, because originally when they were going to start KC, we all said, no, don't do it. Unless you're willing to make a real business out of it and make money, don't do it because it's not it's not worth it. It's not all worth all the problems. Um, and I was just like, you talk to Keemstar. I mean, you talked to him already, but talk to Keemstar. Sit down with him and show him your and like really sit down and go over like your content, and how to how to improve it, how to get better, and all this other stuff. Because this guy probably could give you million dollar tips. You know, it's not yeah, every day right. you get to sit down with no, a I, successful I, I millionaire agree, in I your agree career. With you. I agree with you, but it's just, it's, just not, it's, it's, it, it's the same thing of like if you got to sit in a room with Elon Musk and you got to ask him any fucking business questions you wanted, you could learn a ton of fucking information that you probably didn't even know in business. I mean, you get what I'm trying to say? No, so I, I agree with you. But what, I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is just like they're not going to do that, though, because well, he's still, just a lazy fuck. But yeah, he's well, a yazy yeah, fuck. He, but he's lazy. And he also, he also and still stupid. he also still feels like Akeem is doing him a favor, though. That's the truth, because he's obviously getting him on this fight card. Paulie Frog 64 for five saying they're lazy. I do the same thing for my shows. I hunt for clips. It takes a couple of hours, like you said. They're lazy as fuck. And the thing is, it's not like it's not. The thing is, is that the main the main thing that goes into making a show like this is time. OK, so it's like a couple of hours to build the show and make sure you've got the clips and make sure you know what you're talking about. Uh, find out if uh, if something's in the grapevine, you find out if it's real or not. That can yeah. take a little bit longer, obviously. And then you go live and you do like a two hour show. This is what I don't get. It's, it's that. And, and it, it all within itself, all you are doing is talking about stuff on the Internet, whatever clips you found. And half of the time you're showing clips, which are funny anyway. And the whole point is it's a two hour show. Anyone can do this. It's it's easy to do. You've well, just got to have like, tried. Like delusional, bro. But he has, he, again, again, I don't understand how a guy living at his fucking dad's house, like, on, or like, I don't know how you haven't got drive to get the fuck out of your dad's house. You should be waking up every day He's trying to plan the shit, best dude. fucking shows in the world. And this is why you get these fucking long ass five, six hour shows. But it's also because they'll make money during it, too, so. Well, Worski's a fucking retard and he's lazy. Look, this guy, when, when the Salt Poppy thing was going on, before any of you guys knew about it, we already knew who he was fighting. And we were watching his videos. And I'm and he's asking me all these questions because I've been training. I was training. I was training. I've been training boxing. Now it's a hobby, but I was training to fight Ralph, and I was doing amateur fights already. And and he was like, "Well, what do you think about this, Brian?" I'm watching the salt poppy guy, and I'm like, "This guy's gonna fucking destroy you, Worski. So like, this that your, guy is, can box." Is that your real. still? Is that still your opinion on this that he'll win, salt poppy? Yes. Uh, yeah, no. The guy uses mine, his yeah. weight. 
fight, he fights in a dirty box. I mean, what you can watch him. The guy. I've already guy watched him. We've done it. We've done it. We, we put it on Scrapcast. Yeah. But he, he, he does like a, he, he uses his way to, he likes to do a lot of the stiff arming. It's very classic George Foreman style. Yeah. He'll stiff arm your shoulders. He kind of puts you off balance a little bit, then hits you. Watch, you can watch him. Once he starts, once he gets a rhythm, that's what he does. And he fights just like that. And he does a lot of stiff arming and a lot of stopping the motions and getting you displaced. And I explained that to Worst Kiss. This guy's bigger than you. He's going to raw dog bully you. And he likes to fight. He likes to fight with his weight. And you're going to have to deal with a guy who's going to shift on you. I was like, the only way okay. you're going to stop that is establishing, establishing the jab. You're going to have to jab, 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 and keep this guy at a distance. Be, no, and no, you're going to have to I keep him. You're have to have to, I don't think it's him. I think, uh, I think his main thing is going to be his conditioning. I think you're going to see Andy take a blow to the body, and you're going to see him buckle a bit because he's not actually got his conditioning at all for his stomach. He's been so too busy. He's, he's not. He's been too busy working on his fucking his, his fucking arms. And it's like, oh yeah, look at my arms. The most no, you want to laugh. No, but no, no, but no, but hear me out. King of Paul, hear me out. Let me fucking speak for a second. Jesus. So Andy Worski has been working on his fucking arms. If anyone knows anything about throwing a fucking punch, he has been working on his fucking arms. Andy Worski has been working on his fucking arms. If anyone knows anything about throwing a fucking punch, it's not about your it's arms. Your it's about your back and your fucking legs. And, and it's all about the power comes from your yeah. legs at a punch. Sure. Right. And, and Andy's sure. working on his fucking. Oh, look how big my arms are looking now. Look how big. It doesn't matter, Andy. Can you throw a fucking punch? Have you got the power in your legs and your waist to push that, to push it through? It's great having big arms, but if you can't use them, bro. So that's all I wanted to say. So. Um, so Cog, you want to laugh? Well, just to wrap this up for everyone sure. in the chat. So there was a moment where Worski freaked out and wanted to fire his coach. Okay, and his reasoning for it is because he believed that he doesn't need to train for this boxing thing because the salt poppy guy was just like fat. Yeah. And we, I was like, we were all like, do not fire your coach at all. And yeah. he's like, well, my coach is retarded, and I could just, I don't even need to train anymore. I could just go to the gym and work out, and I'll be ready for the fight. And he's he's like, because I know the fundamentals now. This was like one month in. It's like one month in. He's like, I know the fundamentals, and I can just work out at the gym, and that's all I need. I don't need to spar or anything because he's fat, and I'll just beat him because I'll I'll outrun him in the ring. This is that was his fucking brain take logic, and I just was like, you're you're getting your ass beat. And he's like, well, I'm still getting paid. It's like and that's, okay, that's what I'm saying well, to you. Andy's going to lose the fight. He just wants to get paid, and this is what I'm saying to you. Is it's a paycheck to him. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, all right, I'll let you go, buddy. Um, thank you no so worries. much. Uh, didn't mean to interrupt you so much. I just wanted to get stuff out before you wrapped up the show. Um, because I, I know it's a lot of the stuff. A lot of people don't don't know it. So, no, that's um, fair. You you are but, you apparently but, filled yeah. in a lot of gaps for people. So that's good. That's good. I, I hope so. I hope no one's like this fucking guy. I just, I mean, this is everything I said was it's pretty. Pretty much all the stuff behind the scene. There was nothing crazy or nefarious or autistic. It was just we ran. I mean, writers writers wrote the show and they ran with it. I mean, that's essentially it. And again, I, I just can't stand people who get people to write their show for them. That's my personal take. Again, I've always had this issue with people since I fucking started doing YouTube. You're gonna do something, make it your project, make it yours. And if it's your show, do that. If you've got other people as co-hosts and stuff, totally fine if they're contributing towards building the show as well, because you have co-hosts then. But if you've got a load of people behind the scene um, doing it and you just turn up and got a fucking clue that's going on, it's gonna be a shit show. Yeah. Ass, like it has been. But yeah. yeah, we picked on the guy. None of us ever deserved any of the shit that was going on. Gobinson was just trying to help a guy out who told us that he was sick of Worski and he was miserable and he wanted out. No, get, and he get, gave yeah, him yeah. an option. Yeah, he gave him the that. option to first be bridge. He burned it for him as a friend and said, okay, now we can do the show. And PPP rejected all of that. And, and now we're hearing on tonight, you know, we heard last night or whatever on your, on this, that Worski supposedly bought all this equipment and saved him. None of us knew any of this stuff. Yeah. This is the first time we're hearing this story. So it's, it might be true. It might not. I don't know. But if it's true, it makes him look even worse because he talked a lot of shit about Worski to us privately yeah. all the time. All so oh, oh, that's talking. another thing, actually, quickly. So do you know when he got drunk with? Uh, oh no, no, you you were you weren't talking to him as of a month ago. So the other night where he got drunk with PPP and Doc Scott Winston in a video. Uh, yes, that when shit he was sh coming. Shouldn't really be drinking while he's obviously training. But anyway, um, I'll say goodbye to you though, because otherwise we're never going to win this one. So King of Paul, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye, see you, bro. There you go.